A very good evening to you. Welcome to the Weekend Prime. My name is Najma Ismail, sitting in for Ivono Kwara Matole. Our sign language interpreter at the bottom end of your screen is William Silla. Let us take a look at the highlights this hour. Extreme last respects or pure hooliganism. Gorma here fans disrupt actors' funeral in Kisumu. Kusema permanent secretary Aondolewe Katika devolution ministry Na waziri mwenyewe abakie kule Don't act fast It will be Waiguru Dome Pressure on Waiguru to quit As America's New York Times Mocks Kenya over corruption The massacre continues UN says at least 57 children Killed in South Sudan In the last three weeks Senators would have been very happy if we came and said the governor's duty should be impeached. The powers to impeach by the Senate is not constitutional. And why Kenya's Muranga governor Wairia survived impeachment. Welcome to the Weekend Prime. Now, the Kenyan opposition has stepped up calls to have the Devolution Cabinet Secretary Anwai Guru ejected from office. Opposition leaders insist Wai Guru would take responsibility for the alleged wanton pilferage of public funds by people in her ministry and stop passing the buck. Code leader claims that the planning principal Secretary Peter Mangiti is a fall guy for the mess in Wai Guru's docket. Katian's Samugina reports. <laughs> The opposition brigade led by Code Corps Principal Kalonza Musioka wants the beleaguered devolution cabinet secretary to step down from office. Code piling pressure on the president to crack the whip in the devolution ministry, more specifically on the cabinet secretary. Code leaders claiming Weguru's defense before the Parliamentary Accounts Committee is a setup to make her principal secretary, Peter Mangiti, the fall guy for misappropriation of funds at the devolution ministry. Mimi sioni kama kuna haki. Kusema permanent secretary aondolewe katika devolution ministry na waziri mwenyewe abakie kule. Now there is such a thing as the person holding the highest responsibility. <coughs> na huyo hawezi kuwa PS. Huyo ni waziri mwenyewe. Ukasema ule mama aangaliwe. Wakasema hii ni siasa, anachukia mama. Sasa walio kuwa na mtetea wa wenyeo ndi wana muambia rais, mtuwe uyu kama umutoi serikali dazama. Lakini serikali yake mezama teari. Reluctance to make the cabinet secretary set, uh, step aside or uh, uh, action be taken against her is a demonstration that there are forces behind her who actually support what she's been doing. The devolution CS pleaded ignorance in the wanton wastage and misappropriation of public funds in her ministry. Where Guru claimed procurement falls squarely on the doorstep of the principal secretary as he is the ministry's accounting officer. But the opposition wants her out. Everywhere you go, it is corruption, corruption, corruption. Mambo ya Eurobond, we were told it was very successful. Sasa tumeona interest rates za bengi simeenda juu. Defending Waiguru, any father will continually damage the trust that Kenyans have in you. With the motion to impeach the devolution secretary gathering momentum, the opposition has warned its MPs who have signed the impeachment motion not to be compromised. The sponsor of the motion, Nandi Hills MP Alfred Keter, announced that the list of MPs backing Waiguru's impeachment motion had clocked 129 MPs. So this passing the back game, this time, wabunge wabunge, tunawaliza musije mukaweka masaini yenu na lafu kumbe kweka sahi, unataka upatue baasha ya laki moja, ndiyo wondue sahi yako. And that even us as Kanu, we are very much afraid. During our time, they mentioned Goldenberg. During Kimbaki's time, they mentioned Anglo Leasing. During the, 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 the senior Kenyatta, there was Cheb Kube. During you as now, it seems if you don't act fast, it will be Waiguru Dome. 
the impeachment motion is set to be introduced in Parliament once it resumes its session. This is why Guru and her team are expected back before PSC in two weeks' time for further probe. Samogina KTN News. Now, the Kenyan Senate Special Committee that had been appointed to investigate grounds for removal from office of Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia last night declared that the accusations against him did not meet the threshold of impeachment. The special sitting of the Senate saw intense arguments, especially between Cord Allied Senators and Jubilee Allied Senators, as some Senators accuse a special committee of letting Wairia off the hook too easily. Patrick Amimo tells us how Wairia survived. Tabling of a report by the special committee investigating Moranga Governor Mwango Iria to the Senate witnessed some itches. Senators had been invited for a special sitting Friday at 3 p.m. But Senate Speaker Ekwe Ethuro pushed the sitting to 6.30 p.m. after informing senators that the report was not ready. When the sittings resumed, Senators Omar Hassan, Johnson Mudama, Elizabeth Ongoro and Boni Halwale expressed concern and questioned why three members of the special committee, Moses Kajuang, Professor John Lonyangapu and Stephen Sang were in the chambers, yet compilation of the final report had not been completed. The sittings were adjourned to 8 p.m. First and foremost, I want to apologize to the House for the delay that this report has taken. Presenting the committee findings, Senator David Musila said the accusations leveled against Wairia did not meet the threshold of impeachment. Although the governor breached some provisions of the constitution and the law, the particulars of allegations against the governor were in terms of standing order number 68 2B found not to be substantiated. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, the committee recommends, sorry Mr. Speaker, the committee therefore did not recommend the impeachment of the governor of Muranga County. Members of the Muranga County Assembly accused Wairia of purchasing 34.5 acre piece of land along the Kenol Kabati Road worth 340 million shillings by evading the open tender method. The Auditor General argued the procurement ought to have been undertaken through open tender in accordance with the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. The committee agrees there appear to be serious flaws in the procurement process in respect of the Kenol Kabati land. The committee recommended that the Public Procurement Oversight Authority and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission investigate the land purchase and report to the Senate the outcome of the investigations. Uh, once the committee makes a finding that the charges have not been substantiated, that closes the matter. But we would like to know the basis on which the committee is coming to that kind of conclusion. This committee failed in this mandate. Completely. Mr. Speaker, who told them to go and start curing the problem in Moranga? I am not sad that he has been let off the hook, but I am really sad that I, I do not feel satisfied that I interrogated this matter in the, in, and gave it the in-depth analysis befitting this kind of awaiting uh, uh, alle allegation. Musila said the allegation of lack of accountability for the management and use of county resources which had made Moranga County incur unsustainable debts amounting to 2.5 billion shillings was not substantiated. On the Moranga Investments Cooperative Society, the committee found that the governor violated the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act when he sanctioned use of 26 million shillings to advertise the society, which is a private commercial entity. But the committee argued this violation did not amount to a gross violation necessitating removal of Wairia. Mr. Speaker, I think this committee has usurped the role of the Senate. It has gone beyond its mandate. Yeah. The special committee in its report observed that the county funds that had been used in advertising the society be recovered from the society. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. Away from matters politics now, for those who don't understand what a real funeral ceremony in Luanyanza is about the following story, might trigger anger or shock. But for Gormahia fans in Kisumu, it was okay to storm the funeral of TV actor Boniface Agri Okello, popularly known as Bokello. The Gor fans arrived in their numbers, in their regalia, took over the proceedings, forcing some mourners to scamper away. Here's a report. <laughs> The family and friends of the actor Boniface Okello were gathered for the final respects for Bokelo near their Kano home. As fate would have it, the burial was taking place on the same day that Gorma here, whose ardent fan Bokelo was, was set to play Sony Sugar at Kisumu's Moi Stadium. 
The stadium is only a few minutes drive from the home. The Gormahia fans arrived in a manner almost reminiscent of the famous funeral dance known as Tero Buru. They simply took over the proceedings from the clergy whom they accused of leaving the fans out of the ceremony. Close friends and colleagues of the departed in Luoland normally make various displays of affection and drama during burials. But to some of the mourners and to some of the Luo elders, this was a little too much. It was very sad to see the body of a respected person like Nyakwarkira being carried and to be ran about with all over the compound. Witnesses say Kisumu Senator Professor Nyang Nyong and MPs Fred Auta of Nyando and Silvan Sosele of Kasipul Kabondo found themselves tongue-tied and some leaders were taken away from the scene by their guards. Any, anything that shows disrespect to a deceased sometimes brings bad omen to the community and we cannot allow it to be happening anywhere again. The actor passed away last month after a short illness. The Gormahia fans later allowed the burial to proceed and helped to bury Okello at his home before proceeding to watch the football match in Kisumo. Now to the Kitty News. On regional matters now, the United Nations has raised an alarm of a massacre of children in South Sudan. The UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says at least 80 people, among them 57 children, have been killed in the past two weeks within Unity State in South Sudan. Another 40,000 people are starving to death. This highly historic occasion on August the 27th this year was one that was meant to evoke a collective sigh of relief among citizens of South Sudan and the world at large. But that was never to be, as promises of ceasefire between forces loyal to President Salva Kiir and his deputy and arch rival Riek Machar were to just remain that. Empty promises on paper, as gunfire and bloodshed reigned over South Sudan. And now, the United Nations has released reports detailing massacre of children caught up in the fighting. In a research in South Sudan's Unity State, the United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs now says 80 civilians were reported killed between October 4th and the 22nd, more than three quarters of these being children. The report further indicates that 50 rape cases were reported, a weapon of war being used by both warring factions, some of the victims being children. Compounding the crisis even further, more than 40,000 civilians are starving to death as the fighting has disrupted all farming activities. <coughs> Experts have warned that 3.9 million people in the country are staring at an imminent famine before the end of the year if the fighting continues. Open fighting broke out in South Sudan in December 2013 when President Salva Kiir accused his deputy Riek Machar of planning a coup to topple his government, setting off a wave of retaliatory attacks that have ethnically divided the poverty-stricken country and destabilized what is still the world's youngest nation which was born only four years ago. Murimi Mwangi, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, tonight, something new, something exciting launches live on KTN at 10 p.m. So make a date right after this news bulletin because a lot of land in a lot of lands in Kenya. And I hope you bought your tickets for a chance to win 100 million shillings and thousands of other cash prizes. Let's now join Beverly and Mike who are standing by to tell us all about the lotto and what you have to do to win the cash.
here so what you need to do is join us in a bit you have a chance of winning 100 million kenya shillings and thousands of other cash prizes so join us in a bit and be a part of the lotto live indeed stay tuned to ktn time now for a short break but don't go too far i will be back with more news Welcome back to the Weekend Prime. Let's now move on to a feature story which has been the subject of much debate among Kenyan men and women and even Ugandans. Now, is it true that Kenyan men would prefer to marry Ugandan women if they had the choice? And is it just rumors or do Ugandan women make better wives? Take a look at the following story. It is this river that stands in between these two towns, both sharing the same name, Luakaka, at the Kenya-Uganda border. The community on the Uganda side are Bagisu, while those on the Kenyan side are Bokusus. However, the two speak the same language. But the most interesting thing on this border part of these two countries is that the Kenyan men prefer marrying Ugandan women. Abdul Ghani is one among the many men who have been attracted to the Ugandan women. Despite the fact that he had already married a Kenyan wife, he describes the Ugandan's good behavior as inviting, to an extent where he decided to take a second out of marriage. <laughs> On arrival in his home, the first new experience of the Ugandan woman's hospitality hits us when Abdul's wife serves as water on her knees. Either kama mchane kiwa amekuona na kwa umbali, Lazima ata kukimbilia, apige magoti, akupoke, akuhag, alafu, akushukuru atimume pole safari. Kitu ambacho eh, wabibi wetu wa Kenya ambaye hawana, hawana akili hiyo, hawana hiyo, hiyo upokezi muema kwa waume. Kwa sababu muke wa Kenya huwa okija, ye huwa anakuangalia tu pako ingie ndani hato kiwa mebeba kitu we mwenye weke kwa meza. Lakini wauku hawawezi. Asubuhi pia kama umeamuka kwa malazi paka utatoka pika magoti msalamie umelalaje ndio toke nje ufungue mlango. It is a couple blessed with four children and over the years they have been together they say their friendship has remained as fresh as the first day they met. Abdul refers to the Ugandan women as more respectful to their husbands compared to the Kenyan women. Si tumezoea wake wetu huwa ni kama waume kwa boma. Kwa sababu vitu nyingi mnasaidiana. Iwe ujenzi wa boma, iwe nini mnasaidiana na tena wako raf. Na vile niliona nikaja huku nikaona vile wanawake wa hapa ni wapole na ni wanyenyekevu nikaamua niwe na mmoja ili nione nijione pia na ukweli e, wako na tabia nzuri hiyo ajili ya unyenyekevu na upole wao nipelifanya mimi nikaoa mke wa pili bride price payment in Uganda is not allowed as compared to Kenya if lucky you could even marry without paying bride price kuwa wapitishi ngombe ine hata awe wa university wapitishi ngombe ine sasa hiyo ndi yamefanya attraction nyingi kwa vijana ya ngambo ama watu wa Kenya wao wanapendelea kuoa huku kisababu wanaona mahari ni chini takupea kama tumesikilizana uwezi, uwezi toa hiyo mali takuomba tu kama nguo ya mama e, kanzu ya baba na mafuta tu na bivirizi na panga na jembe tosha muishi vizuri mali baadaye over time kenyan men on this side of the border have continued to marry from uganda citing their behavior as a charm and the inexpensive bride price making it easier to intermarry a trend that may not be coming to an end anytime soon nicolas omboa ktn news from luakaka uganda
Well, I'll just leave that there. Now, persons living with disabilities in Kenya are set to get more assistance from the now famous Nikofiti campaign. The Kenya Reinsurance Corporation launched a new campaign to acquire business parks within Nairobi City for their use. The initiative launched by Kenya Re under the Nikofiti Beyond Disability campaign will ensure that such people have space to set up their businesses. Plans are at an advanced stage to acquire licenses for the premises from the Nairobi County Government. Kenyari is carrying out the campaign in partnership with the Association of the Physically Disabled of Kenya and the Standard Group. Other than mobility, after you, you are able to access places you couldn't access before without this, what do you do? And we are trying to answer that question by saying that uh, we can probably facilitate you to get involved in economic activities, social and economic activities, through doing some business. Meshukuru sana wa Juhu na mwingine utegemea upewa, utegemea ukawa barabara uomba na sisi tupendi uomba. Tunapenda kujifanyia na mikono yetu. Welcome back. The Coalition for Reforms and Democracy is expected to submit signatures from Kenyans supporting the Okoa Kenya initiative to the IBC tomorrow at the Commission's head office. The Coalition says it has gathered 1.4 million signatures that it hopes will pile pressure on the Commission to facilitate for a referendum bill to amend the Constitution. Suna East MP Junet Mohammed says that court will then hold a rally at Huruma grounds to sensitize Kenyans on the contents of the referendum bill to be tabled in Parliament. This issue of that bill and the Okoa Kenya referendum is not about, it's not a referendum about uh, code only, it's not about code, it's about Kenyans. And I want to tell Jubilee to come on board and participate, participate, take part of this referendum and look at this bill in a way that they can unite the country. Let you believe not take this matter of the Okoa Kenyan referendum as a court issue. This is a second chance. They reviews the other time dialogue. This is a second chance to come together as a country. Now, to some rather bizarre news, this may be hard for some people, um, but residents of Kenya's Makweni County are in shock after a snake allegedly wrestled a man down and lodged itself inside his body. The powerful snake is claimed to have attacked the man after he reportedly trespassed through a neighbor's home and was refu has refused to come out of his leg despite fervent prayers by members of nearby churches. Muring Murimi Mwangi has the details. Spiritual firework in a deadly face off with the forces of darkness, said to be in the form of a dangerous snake hiding inside this man's leg. A spiritually charged prayers doing little to ease the pangs of pain, biting Daniel Musila hard as the said snake occasionally maneuvers inside his body. But how did it get here? Well, Musila says he was on his way home when some dogs came chasing after him. He says he ducked them by jumping over a neighbor's fence. And that's where his tribulations started. <laughs> Musila says this was no ordinary snake, but an evil spell placed on the homestead to guard against trespassers. Although residents here claim the snake may have attacked him allegedly because he was trying to steal the fence which he claims to have jumped over during his escape from the dogs. Mm. Ama kuna kitu anataka kunitai ni mlipe. 
Musila, who sells second-hand phones, is now calling out to the owner of the said homestead to come and command the snake of his body because it is subjecting him to great pain, adding that he is innocent and never meant to trespass through the home. <laughs> But as these fervent prayers to free him continue, Musila may still continue hosting the said deadly serpent inside his body. <coughs> well, until its owner comes back for it. Murimi Mwangi, KTN News. Top Fry and Akuru are the champions of the 2015 Battle of the Titans Cup. Top Fry defeated KCB by 33-29 points in a thrilling final at the RFEA grounds and walked away with 200,000 shillings. Take a look. Fresh from winning the Impala Flatlight Tournament, KCB emerged the main favourites to clinch the preseason friendly cup that the Battle of the Titans. The bankers started brightly with the first try for the Minnesota match. Nakuru replied six minutes later and Martin Muita successfully converted the try to give Nakuru a 7-5 lead. Then it seemed like a one-sided affair as Wanyore dominated the match and increased their tally to 19 points to 5. But Marlin Mukoli pulled one try back for KCB at the stroke of halftime to make matters 19-10. Immediately after the break, Topfry continued pressing and they added two tries and Mwita, who was at the top of his game, made successful conversions. KCB almost managed a sensational comeback as they registered three quick tries and two conversions from Isao Tieno to reduce the deficit to just four points. But Topfry hanged on to win the match by 33 points to 29. <laughs> On top of the trophy, they were also awarded 200,000 shillings. Abula Ahmed, Kitchen Sports. Bunge Football Club thrashed National Government Administration Offices Ngao, Machakos County, 4-1 in the friendly match played at the Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos. Bunge FC captain and Machakos MP Victor Munyaka opened the score in the 10th minute after slotting in a rebound from a penalty kick. Now Jito Bosa slotted in the second goal and Wycliffe Bola scored their third as Zimbakasi MP Mutura scored the fourth goal after looping the ball past Ngao goalkeeper. Ngao's solitary goal was scored by Stephen Jogu in the tag of Wobunge outsmarted Ngao while in the ladies volleyball Commandante High School thrashed Bunge by three sets to nothing. KTN Weather, in association with More Team Do. No longer, because I bought more Team Doom Power Guard, which kills 100% mosquitoes. More Team Doom Power Guard kills 100% mosquitoes. Well, thank you very much for watching the weekend prime. My name is Najma Ismail. Have a lovely evening.